Michael. Well, welcome. Um, how was your first fight week as a UFC fighter? How's it been? The experience and, and everything. Yeah, there's a you know it's um it's it's, it's been amazing, man. Just uh, getting to know the team. Team over here is uh, just, just so organized, so on point, uh, so welcoming, so hospitable, um, so helpful. It's 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 good. To, it, it really does feel like I've just been signed to you know a new football team and just getting all the facilities. Everything is just done at top tier level. So professional. So yeah, I'm 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 excited, man. I'm ex I'm happy to be here. Has that brought any extra nerves? I mean, you're such a veteran that you've been around for, for so long and have experienced so much, but it is something new, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a new experience, but um, I, I, I embrace new experiences. I, I always say I love being a, a student uh, and learning new things, and so that's how I feel. Just It just feels like I'm just experiencing new things. I'm just soaking it all in, and come Saturday, I get to release that, all that energy. And you, you've talked about how being in the UFC was a dream of yours for, for quite some time. So I'm sure that you daydreamed a lot of one day transitioning and, and joining the UFC. Um, when you did, did you who did you envision yourself fighting? Is is Kevin Holland the guy that was on your radar and somebody you wanted to fight? Nah, not not really. As in like um, at that point, it was just a case of just being here. You know, when when you're visualizing it, uh, <laughs> when you're visualizing being in the cage, it's more just me, the crowd, what I'm doing, my you know finishes and how my entrances and all, all that kind of stuff. It, the the opponent doesn't mean anything because all I'm trying to do is manifest all the good points of uh, of, of it. And um, whoever get ki kicked in the face on the way, it, it doesn't matter. And what are your goals joining this promotion? Is it the belt? Is it just having fun super fights? Uh, what what is your goal now that you're in the UFC? I don't, I don't, I don't do things just to make up numbers. So we're, you know, we're here for the belt. I'm here to get the bling. So um, getting to the top is key, which is why you know I start with somebody or the likes of Kevin Holland. It needs to be that type of challenge. There's no point. I don't, I don't have time to be trying to build myself up, and I don't need to. And that was a conversation I had, you know, with the UFC. They were, you know, uh, equally in agreement of that and you, you know I think you know, they've they've shown their intentions by giving me Kevin Holland first. Lastly, uh, what does the path to the title look like for you? Uh, a big entertaining uh, knockout and um, maybe another spectacular knockout and then the belt. Michael, Kevin's known as a bit of a showman as are you. Um, in a way, is this sort of the perfect starting platform for you, right? If you go in there and he talks a bit of shit to you and you can talk some shit back, get the knockout, that propels you in a way that like Michael Chandler got propelled by Dan Hooker. Are you sort of looking at this like that? Yeah, I, uh, I keep telling everybody, I feel like we're going to have uh, the first um, live in-cage podcast of <laughs> me and him talking. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's such a great fight, I think, for so many different reasons. Uh, he loves to strike, you know, I love to strike, you know, he, his entertainment, in fact, he loves to talk, I love to kick people in the face, it just, it just works. <laughs> he does like to strike, and we've seen him make some deals in the past about staying on the feet and cutting out the grappling. Do you kind of feel like he might make that deal with you or no? He is definitely not going to make that deal. Um, I think he's, he's had a, a taste of that style already. And uh, yeah, I don't think he, he's going to want to use as many of his attributes as possible to, to make sure he wins this fight. In a way, though, if he does do that to you and you get to stop that and still get the victory, that shows the UFC fans that, hey, like, I'm not just this flashy guy getting strikes. I can do MMA. No, of course, of course. And, um, but the thing is, for me, I, I don't and I've never cared to prove anything to anybody. I know what I do. I have to do it in training every single day. And the fact that people think I go to an MMA gym and only train kickboxing is wild to me, considering I'm doing MMA. Um, so yeah, like, you know, I'm, I'm, where I'm so superior in my striking, it does feel like, you know, everything else is miles behind, but um, it's, it's slowly catching up. Uh, last one for me, for the people in, who might not know, how big would you versus Leon Edwards, English versus English be uh, for the world title? stadium type big this is what i mean and it's it's just so good for the uk it's so good for inspiring more talented fighters in future coming from that side of the world um yeah i'm just going to keep manifesting i'm going to keep putting it out there and uh we're going to make it happen 
Right here, next to you. Uh, kind of going off of that, uh, I know a lot of people want to see you in the UFC before, but given the state of UK MMA now with Tom and Patty and Molly and now you and Leon, is now the perfect time to kind of join the UFC considering like that part of the world is never, seem, seemingly never been better? Yeah, 100%. And this is why I say I think things just happen for a reason. I'm a big believer and, you know, everything happens for a reason and everyone's like oh you, you know i felt like you should have been here years before and this and that, and that no 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 it happens for a reason and as you say look at the state of the the uk um mma now it's just a perfect time to add an explosive exciting very good looking guy um i know you had a few things to say about the ufc gloves but have you had a chance to actually get into the octagon because in bellator there's not a lot of corners you can't really corner a guy in there in the circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've, I've actually been uh, uh, in the cage. The cage is fine. The canvas is unbelievable. It's amazing. Um, like, it's perfect for uh, my style. It's got so much grip and traction for me to be able to move. Yeah, it's just going to make me that much more dangerous. Do you think the Bellator cage limited you in that, in terms of grip and the lack of corners and the circling and everything? You know what it is? For me, it was, more, it was slightly inconsistent because there'll be certain times that they spray it to clean it, and it would leave a slight film on top. And for someone of my style, having any kind of slippery surface is just difficult, you know? Um, so, but this one, you can tell just the quality and how consistent it's gonna be regardless. So if they can put whatever on and it's, it's got grip. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to performing in this cage. Speaking of Kevin, uh, did you know he's, uh, I think a second degree black belt in Kung Fu? Yeah, I'm um, in Kung Fu. Yeah. Like, well, he's, when they introduce him, he goes, uh, Bruce Buffer goes, he's a kung fu fighter fighting out of so-and-so. He's a kung fu fighter. So here's my understanding, because I, I started in Laogar Kung Fu. Yeah. We have sashes, not belts. I so think, I don't think it's second degree something in kung oh, Okay, okay, okay. Because if he said that, then he's no. lying to you. <laughs> this, is, this is someone else saying that. So <laughs> okay, 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 he okay. have a background in kung fu. Okay, no, that's, that's, that's cool, man. It's, um, it's, it's good to see... Uh, to uh, kung fu, you know, uh, opponents kind of collide. It reminds me of um, I don't know if you've seen this film, Twin uh, Twin Warriors, always called Tai Chi Masters, depending on uh, what side of the world you get it. Uh, one of my favorites, the Jet Li movie, unbelievable. So yeah, we're gonna we're, we're two Twin Warriors. And then last one for me, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Sean and Cheeto? Ah uh, man, it's a it's 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 a great fight, great storyline to it as well. Because obviously the first one is a bit, bit controversial in terms of how it how it ended, um, but for me O'Malley's just yeah he's he's got something that's something special um, that uh, he just keeps and he seems to be getting better and better and better. Uh, obviously similar to myself, his timing and stuff, but also seeing his jujitsu ability and stuff as well. Yeah, it's a, he, a, a for me I'd put my money on Sean O'Malley, but it's it's, it's definitely a difficult fight. Michael, right here to your right. Um, when we first learned about this fight, it actually popped up, I think, on the War Room when, in one of Dana White's videos, and it had a, a Toronto date in January. Was that ever a, a date that was offered to you, or is, was it always March? Yeah, it was never a thing. It was, it was weird. I'm sure it was the Nelk Boys or something. That, uh, that it was in their route. I don't know. But I, even when I went back to see that clip, I, I don't know how somebody even managed to pause it on that. I was trying so hard to see that. That was on there for less than 0.5 of a second like how did some people spend time yeah so i don't know how they even found that but yeah it was never really a thing i think they were just kind of putting you know super matchups on the board and somebody happened to see it internet's a wonderful place um obviously you've been in some some big fights grand prix fought for a title uh you know we hear about octagon jitters and the nerves are there any nerves this fight week so far or is this just old hat to you at this point yeah i've i've, I've done it too many times now um I always have, I don't like to call it nerves. There's always that kind of like pre-fight feeling. Um, my pre-fight, this happens in the gym as well. Like my coach, the sec, it happens every single time. My coach is like, okay guys, glove up or pad up. I have to run to the toilet. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is, but it's like, it's just my body's screaming at me like, yeah, we're about to go to war, you know? Um, and again, I don't like to call it nervous. I, I, I call it excitement. Um, so yeah, I got some excitement and that usually helps me. Last one for me. I mean, obviously coming over from Bellator, uh, what is the, the main difference you've noticed between the promotion so far? Organization, structure, people on the floor, um, just professionalism. It, it, yeah, it, it definitely feels like I've stepped up a league. And 
we're not talking um, in terms of opponent here or, or, or caliber of fighter, because for me, mixed martial arts is a sport and I've fought so many uh, guys in the UFC and so many guys outside the UFC and the standard is the same, Depend it's just a, it's, it depends on the practitioner. Um, it's more about what what's happening out there. The guys are so on it, so helpful. Seriously, that's, for me, is the, the key thing. Um, even just having to make weight and these guys sorting out your foods and your nutrition and just, just it's just so helpful. And it's, I'm so used to having to organize all that kind of stuff myself, having not having to think about that kind of thing it, it really does uh, play a massive part in um, your experience uh, coming into a fight. And Michael, right here. Um, I think one of the unique things about you covering you through your Bellator years was you were always, um, you would always mention how one day you would go to the UFC. Like, you didn't hide that. You didn't give politically correct answers. I guess, why did you manifest that so early on? And, and I guess, why did you see yourself, no matter what happened, ending up here? It was, uh, I guess, for me, is because it was my intention at the start so it wasn't something that I, I've ever lost uh, sight of. Uh, the, I was a typical fan uh, before, so I only knew UFC, you know. I was probably the guy that would probably ask you the question, do you do UFC, you know, um, at the time. So going into mixed martial arts was me wanting to go to UFC to the point where I was considering moving to America because at the time I was like, well, the only way I'd be able to be good or even learn mixed martial arts is that I'd have to move to the States. You know, this is just me being clueless that not knowing that there is mixed martial arts everywhere um, until I, you know, I came across my gym, London Shoot Fighters, and then, you know, just fell in love with uh, the team there, the guys, the coaches there, and then kind of started my journey from there. But I think I've just never lost sight of what of wanting to eventually uh, eventually come here at some point um, just because it was my original goal. So, yeah, I think, yeah, that's why I just I just want to manifest what got me started in the first place. Michael, over here. Obviously, you, you mentioned that this is a dream come true for you. So how and when did those conversations start with the promotion? And when did you really, you know, have it sink in that, hey, I'm about to go make my UFC debut? So the... Interestingly enough, actually, I think their first reach out, which was kind of a mistake on their part because it kind of showed their interest. Um, basically, when I did my bare knuckle fight and I announced that I'm doing my bare knuckle fight, people started reaching out like, oh, does that mean he's a free agent? And obviously the UFC reached out like, is he a free agent? And we're like, oh, so somebody's interested, huh? <laughs> um, so obviously that was them initially, and it was like, oh, no, no, still, still with Bellator, you know, got X amount of fight, but I've got this amount of time left, and then we can speak there, thereafter. And then the, 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 the conversation just remained open, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, so we kind of started from there, and then it's weird. It, took, it was a bit of a longer process in the beginning, and then it just sped up right towards the end uh, to the point where we even just the announcement of the fight, you know, we hadn't even confirmed everything, I want to say that three three days before. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a crazy ride, a roller coaster ride. Hi, Michael. Good evening for Ecuador. Do you think winning this fight will put you in the ranking a possible title career? Uh, sorry, say the last bit again. Uh, do you think winning this fight will put you in the ranking and a possible title career match? Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think the reason, like I said, the reason why I've even got a fight, uh, a fighter of this standard at this level, is because of their intentions is aligned with mine of wanting to me to be at the top. Um, I think you know I always say I think the added value that I think I bring is that I, I'm very capable of marketing myself without anybody. I'm very good at marketing. I'm very aware of how to utilize certain spaces in uh, uh, to, to help market myself. And I think they understand me with a title and my brain and how to market as well. It's just, it's great for everybody, uh, all parties involved. So yeah, definitely, you know, um, this, this win will put me up there. How you doing, you up? Hi, good, good, good. I just wanted to get your thoughts on Ian Gary, because in the last media day, he gave a prediction to the fight and basically said you got no chance against Kevin Holland. So I just wanted to... Yeah, you know what? I think you know what? everyone's entitled to their opinions. You know, I, I never like to, to need to crush anybody for, for their opinion. He's allowed to uh, share his thoughts because he's doing it in, at, at the top level now. Um, 
I also think that's a little bit of worry. I think that's a little bit of, I hope he gets crushed because it means then I'm not in line for, for anything. Because, you know, me winning means I'm in, potentially in line to have to do it. And now I can't, I can't be like, oh, no, there's other reasons why I can't fight him. So you're going to find a lot of people uh, wishing for my downfall that are in the division simply because they don't want to cross me. Um, and they know what that's going to mean. So yeah, that's, that's how I see it. I, yeah, I don't, I don't need to, to tear him down for anything. I, you're happy for, happy for your opinion. Happy to take it on board and happy to throw it back in your face when I knock him out.